Hello and welcome to the Thursday, September 26, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I am recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today I wrote up a quick summary of reflective DNS attacks we are seeing. These attacks have sort of been a stable of the internet background radiation for decades now, but from time to time I'm sort of taking a quick look what changed and what has changed from the offensive as well as defensive side. Probably the most notable defensive change is that RFC 8482 becomes more used, probably better known after being out now for a couple years. The main purpose of the RFC is to allow operators of DNS servers to not respond to any queries or at least to truncate the response. This is often implemented by a substitute H info or host info record. These records, if they're implemented for RFC 8482, often just contain the string RFC 8482. So then you know why they are doing it. Due to the large amount of data returned by normal any queries, they are your common go-to query for denial of service attacks. On the offensive side, still seeing sort of the same type of uh, domains uh, being abused here, I did notice quite a number of malformed DNS requests originating from the same sources as we had the normal DNS requests for any. I believe it's due to a broken tool, maybe a broken configuration for a tool, and the host names are not encoded properly. If anybody has any other ideas, uh, let me know. I do see the same source emitting a valid and invalid query. So it may not just be the tool, maybe more how it's uh, being uh, used and looks like a simple counting error when encoding that length uh, label format for the host name in the DNS uh, packet. More details and a little video with the analysis uh, can be found in the diary for Wednesday. Horizon 3 did it again and published a deep dive into the SolarWinds web help desk hard-coded credential vulnerability. The blog post shows what the hard-coded credentials are and then also how they could be used. It looks like this actually is an oversight that was left over from a vulnerability that was patched back in 2021. Back then, they randomized it credentials like this on each reboot, but this particular credential apparently got missed. So these credentials are now public and they can be used to retrieve help desk ticket conversations, which of course often include sensitive data. If you haven't already, you certainly want to patch this before the weekend. And Red Team Pentesting published a blog post identifying WatchGuard's single sign-on agent as using an unauthenticated and unencrypted protocol. The data exchange via this protocol is used to apply firewall rules to clients and an attacker could forward messages to a different host and in doing so apply firewall rules to the wrong host. So this is not sort of your standard single sign-on protocol, stuff like SAML or such, but uh, for example, a very open rules meant for a low risk host could then be applied to an endpoint that requires much more strict firewall rules. The attacker may also impersonate other clients and then obtain more relaxed firewall rules that would have uh, been applied to the other client. Any system connecting to a network managed by WatchGuard Active Directory single sign-on will be probed to obtain information like, for example, the logged in user and essentially to figure out what uh, rules to apply to this particular uh, host. But this information is... Again, unencrypted, unauthenticated, so an attacker just needs to set up a little listener like SoCat is what Red Team pen testing used and then respond with whatever information you would like to pretend to respond with. A workaround is to block traffic on port 4114, which is the port used for this protocol. 
And recently, Google Chrome started implementing encrypted cookies. What this meant was that uh, the cookie data was kept in an encrypted file. In order to retrieve a cookie, Google Chrome had to connect to a special daemon that ran with or that still runs uh, with elevated privileges that then can give it the key in order to decrypt the data that's coming back from these encrypted files. The main goal here was to eliminate info stealers that are stealing cookies from the browser and with that then are being used to improve impersonate a user's session. Well, uh, some of these info stealers now announced that uh, they have been able to bypass uh, this protection. It is a very hard uh, problem to essentially allow a user access to the data, but other software running as the user should not have access uh, to the data. So basically, separate different processes running as the same user by still being able to do things like uh, save data to the desktop and such which you often like to do in browsers. The ultimate goal or fix here is probably Google's device bound session credentials, which will be cryptographically signed by an onboard root of trust like a TPM chip or something like this. And these credentials will then not be usable on different hardware. Well, that's it for today. A couple listeners have asked if the upcoming hurricane will affect me in the release schedule for this uh, podcast. Well, uh, it doesn't appear to affect uh, us here in Jacksonville at all. So the Stormcast will continue throughout the storm. And I hope people in the direct path in the panhandle of Florida here will fare well and hopefully get out in time. That's it for today. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.